Is falconry a job? Well, not really. But in this video, I'm going to go through different careers you can have working with birds of prey. But first, why isn't falconry a job? Well, if you look at the, the traditional literal definition of falconry, it is the art of hunting quarry with a trained bird of prey, and it's pretty hard to turn that into a paid career. Having said that, there have been a couple of people here in the UK that have done traditional hunting falconry as a career, and back in ye olde day, it was also a lot more common um, when there would be noblemen and rich people and the kings, they would hire falconers to train and care for their birds. So it was a career back then. It doesn't really seem to be a viable career option nowadays. But there are many jobs here in the UK that you can do that involve working with birds of prey. So I'm gonna take you through them and then wait until the end where I'm gonna give you a few tips on how you can actually get started in one of these careers. Now, the first career the most obvious one on the surface is in the zoo industry. Now, there are many zoos here in the UK that have birds of prey on site um, in aviaries, uh, but don't actually fly them or train them or do any kind of show with them. But there are plenty of zoos that do train and fly their birds for displays. And then also there is a bunch of falconry centers dotted all throughout the UK and they do training and flying and displays with the birds of prey. Um, now, a falconry centre technically is still a zoo here in the UK. They do require a zoo licence, so it's still working within the zoo industry. And this is a, a really rewarding career. Uh, I have worked in the zoo industry. It doesn't really feel like a job. It's wonderful. Um, you get to work with such a variety of birds um, and you just get to be out and about in nature, working with the animals you want to work with. Um, but there are some downsides. Um, the zoo industry is not the best paid industry always, and it's difficult work. Um, there are many issues that come with being a zookeeper, and it's an incredibly competitive industry and really difficult to get into. But other than that, there are also mobile bird of prey businesses. which do very similar work to the zoos, but they don't have a physical site and they dot around and move around different places. And that is what my business is. So here in the UK, it's a different kind of license. I don't have a zoo license. I hold something called an animal activities license, which allows me to um, do work with my birds of prey and do displays and earn money with my birds, but it means that the public are not allowed to come to where my birds are housed. So all the paid work I do with my birds has to be elsewhere. So that's why I go around the country doing different country fairs and events. I do school visits um, and I do experience sessions on a farmer's field. Um, and so there's a bunch of businesses just like mine, just like Falconry Centres dotted throughout the UK. Um, one of the difficulties with these kind of businesses is that they're often uh, a lot smaller than a zoo or a falconry centre and often do not have many staff and don't often have paid positions available. So again, it's a very competitive market, very difficult to, to get a job in this uh, area and again, not the best paid. So coming away from the very sort of public areas of working with birds of prey, another career working with birds is in pest control. So it's becoming increasingly popular nowadays to use birds of prey and falconers uh, for pest control. And it's basically a, an environmentally friendly, non-lethal form of pest control. The birds of prey are not there to kill the pests. They're there to work as a deterrent to sort of change the nesting behaviors of the birds that are being a pest or a nuisance. And so a falconer is paid to, to go to a site and fly their birds around 
almost display style, but usually for quite a bit longer and they don't have to be talking to the public about what they're doing. Um, it's a bit more private and personal. Um, and so just by flying your birds around, it introduces a predator into the area so that all the nuisance or pest birds think, ah, this place is too dangerous to build a nest, and so they then move on. And so how that then has a, a knock-on effect to, to help prevent pest birds from coming in the future is that many of these species, like gulls, will return to the site that they fledged from once they're a mature adult to make their own nest. So if you've caused their parents to go somewhere else, it means all the future offspring will go somewhere else. So um, it's a much better paid job than the educational with the public in the zoo kind of industry. Um, but then the sort of downsides are that you can sometimes end up in uh, flying in very risky areas, not always the nicest areas, sometimes it's a lot of landfill sites. Um, I had a, a big contract um, that involved me spending six hours on top of the roof of an eight-storey building with no railings or sides or anything, uh, getting battered around by the wind, attempting to fly my birds. So. It's, it's not as fun and glamorous as the centre or display environment in my opinion, but it is much better paid and it's nice to have a bit of private time with the birds as a career. We interrupt this video for a quick mention from today's sponsor. What? A sponsor on the Mercer Falconry YouTube channel? Yeah, nobody's paying me any money. I'm sponsoring myself. I recently started a podcast with my friend Jake. It's called the Owly Fans Podcast, and it will be available right here on YouTube, not just as a podcast, but also in video form so you can watch along. Um, we're going to be discussing all kinds of different falconry topics, uh, bird of prey different topics, animal training topics, science topics, nature topics, um, as well as giving all sort of inside scoop on running and organising the falconry fairs and various other events because there is a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people don't get to know about. So, if that, any of that sounds interesting to you, then please go and subscribe to the Owly Fans Podcast YouTube channel. Um, have a look at us on social medias, Facebook and Instagram. Um, it, the first episode will be released 2nd of March at 7 o'clock 2024. So watch out for that. Anyway, back to the video. Another area that I'm really passionate about um, that is a career is in conservation. So the conservation of birds of prey. And this kind of comes hand in hand with the zoo environment. So one of the uh, things that um, requires a zoo license here in the UK is that you are doing conservation work. But then there are also charities and other organisations that you can work for that specify purely in just the conservation work without the, the sort of zoo aspect of the public visiting and doing public displays. Um, so I've got friends who work for the RSPB um, and she does sort of surveys of lots of um, wild bird of prey populations. Um, and then they do lots of ringing and monitoring. Um, and then there's also a bunch of charities that are uh, breeding endangered species for release back into the wild, or just to make sure that there's a lot of um, there's enough of their genetics kept in captivity if the wild counterparts ever start to suffer. Um, so there's lots of charities and other organisations that you can work for that are purely just conservation of birds of prey. Another interesting career is actually in science scientific research and it's not a common one uh, but I do have a friend who works for a university and their job is to train Harris Hawks that are used in a scientific study so there are aspects of scientific studies um, that do also involve working with birds of prey that's just a, an interesting uh, addition um, to the, the, the general sort of list. And then another big one is aviculture, which is the breeding of birds of prey. 
So here in the UK there's a bunch of different um, breeding facilities, usually um, falcon breeding facilities, and so you can have a career in just the whole breeding aspect of birds of prey. And whilst you're not going to be out and doing displays or you're not really going to be flying many birds of prey, there is still a lot of hands-on work with lots of different species of falcon and sometimes others um, and helping to sort of look after chicks and eggs um, and so it's still very much a career with birds of prey. It's just a very different side um, to what you would usually typically think about. Now that is my main list of careers working with birds of prey, but if you have any other uh, options or ideas for careers working with birds of prey, then please do leave them in the comments below so that everybody else can go and check them out um, and look at all the options that are available. And then moving on, I've got a few tips on how you can actually get a career working with birds of prey. <laughs> Now, one of these tips um, is to study the relevant qualifications. Now, it's not always necessary and many of these careers don't require any formal education, but it can't hurt really. And if you're young and thinking about what you might want to do in the future, freedom to go and educate yourself and get higher education and qualifications uh, to help you on your path. And so uh, you can do A-levels at college um, in the sciences, but I actually went and did a diploma in animal management and science. So there's a bunch of different colleges that offer level three uh, extended diplomas in a range of different animal topics, conservation, uh, management, behavior, animal science. Um, and then you can go off and do um, a range of different degrees that will also really help within this kind of field. Um, so uh, zoology is, would be a, uh, a huge one if you want to work in the zoo environment. Um, I think recently they have, uh, one of the universities actually introduced an ornithology degree, which I wish that was available when I was uh, at university, uh, but wasn't at the time, but that might now may be a thing. Uh, and then a range of other animal science uh, degrees or animal behaviour, animal welfare, all of these degrees as well as things like ecology and conservation degrees uh, will all help towards a career in the field of working with birds of prey. Another tip of mine is, I've said it on the channel before, to surround yourself with the right people. I have got myself in the past thousands of pounds worth of pest control contracts just by knowing the right people. So the way that you know the right people in my opinion is to um, make sure you're taking part, visit events, uh, join a local club um, and just get to know the people in your area, uh, the people who have done it for a long time um, and as you build up those contacts more and more doors will open and more and more opportunities will arise for you and it will really help you uh, push forward with a career working with birds of prey. And my final tip for getting a career working with birds of prey is just to gain as much experience as possible you need to get started working with birds of prey and gain that experience and if you don't know how to do that, this video here will help you with that. <laughs>